Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Color Connection with Amber. This is a special edition as I am hosting the May 2020 Inspiration Challenge on the Altenew blog this month. Definitely make sure that you join us. Here is the photo inspiration and our color scheme that we'll be using this month and also for two episodes of Color Connection. I'm so excited for you guys to try out some bold and vibrant color, so let's get started. I'm starting off with Build a Flower Peruvian Lily. For the first layer, I'm stamping in Warm Sunshine. The second layer is Orange Cream. The third layer is Autumn Blaze. The fourth layer is Citrus Burst. The fifth layer is Maple Yellow. The sixth layer is Honey Drizzle. The seventh layer is Caramel Toffee. And then layers eight, nine, and 10, I stamped in Obsidian Pigment Ink. Now, even though this stamp set has 10 layers to create this incredibly realistic lily, it's extremely easy to line up. And I showed you how I just wiggled the stamp back and forth just a little bit to see where those edges line up. It's super easy to layer this stamp set. The leaves are stamped with bamboo, olive, and moss crisp dye inks, which is from the Tropical Forest ink family. For each background, I used an A2 size piece of watercolor paper from the Altenew watercolor paper set. It's pre-cut to A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I have some clean, clear water and a round brush here, and you can see that I've swiped it across the top of the card. I'm holding the card at an angle, and I'm just letting that water drip down the surface of the card as I hold it at an angle. I want to have some water on the card so that my pigment has some tracks to follow down the card. This will also help the watercolor brush marker from just completely absorbing into the cardstock. I want it to still be able to move, so having the water on the paper is going to help with getting these pigments to move down the card. This is the turquoise watercolor brush marker, and that is from the Tropical Fiesta watercolor brush marker set. As always, I'll have all of the supplies listed down below. I'll also make sure to list the colors that I use for stamping the Peruvian Lily in case you want that as a reference as well. So here I'll alternate between adding a little more water and a little more pigment until I'm happy with the waterfall that I have going on here. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that down below and be sure to ring the bell so that you don't miss any new inspiration. And of course, like this video if you like it. So I'm just tapping the paper on the mat and I'm adding a little more water. And then as a last step, I'll come back in with the watercolor brush marker and just squeeze out more pigments. Now, you can also use your uh, brush marker refills for this as well. So you don't need to use the brush. You could also use the refills and just drop on pigment that way as well. So I'm just taking the brush marker and I'm splattering on some fine splatter here. And then I'll set this panel aside to dry. I'll use the Hello Sentiment from the Peruvian Lily stamp set. And I have a piece of orange sticky back fun foam here that I also cut with the coordinating die. I'm gonna use that on the back of my die cut to pop it up. And before my panel was dry, I totally smeared some areas with the palm of my hand. You can see the pigment on my palm there and I kind of was just like, I don't know, tapping it to see if it was dry. It wasn't. <laughs> so you can actually see my palm print in the cardstock. So. I'm not going to start over. I'm just going to cover that up with the sentiment stamp and then the placement of my flower and my leaves is going to cover up the other palm prints that I have on the card. Fortunately, they were pretty light, so not starting over. Here you can see the finished card and I absolutely love this blue and white. I don't know. There's just something about large areas of this bright blue and white that really speak to me. That coupled with the complementary orange and yellow colors that go so well with blue, I think is just striking and beautiful. So moving on to the second card, I created another waterfall background, this time with the warm sunshine brush marker from the spring garden set. 
Now, I liked this background, but I wanted you to have a little more variety. So I'll speed through this one and then I'll show you a couple other options closer to the end of this video. For the second card, I'll use the Floral Art Stamp Set, stamping the outline layer in Obsidian Pigment Ink, the second layer in Tide Blue Krista Ink, and I did stamp it twice because the first one was just a little bit blotchy. I'm stamping on Nina Classic Crest Solar White for this one, and for the center, I used Fresh Lemon. For this next background, I wanted a little bit of a distressed look, so I sprayed the cardstock with water, and now I'm just dropping Warm Sunshine brush marker into those little water droplets that are on the card. Then I sprayed it with a little bit more water. It was a little more than what I had intended, so now I'm just moving the pigments around. I wanted some harsh edges and some kind of darker areas, and hard edges around there. So I went ahead and heat set it. I'm gonna, I sprayed it with a little more water and I'm dropping in more pigment. So now you can see I'm drying the full pigment with my heat tool and I have it on the lower setting. This is a dual speed heat tool from WOW. And I'm just heating those droplets so that I get some of those hard edges. And then I'm tapping it onto the glass mat and then also with the heat tool just to get those areas moving a little bit more. I still wanted a little more texture, so after this was dry, I went ahead and smushed it into the ink that was already on my craft mat, just to add a little more organic patterns to it. And then I splattered it with some of the leftover ink. I dried it a final time, and then I pulled over my die cut just to see how that was looking. It was okay, but I didn't love it. So I decided to create another background. <laughs> I just wasn't super satisfied with any of my backgrounds yet. They were all pretty, but for whatever reason, it wasn't what I was looking for. So I swiped some clean, clear water over another watercolor panel, and then I've taken a yellow and the warm sunshine brush marker directly to the paper this time. So I've swiped over the yellow, I believe it was citrus burst, and then I'm dropping in some warm sunshine so that those two colors can blend together. And you can see that I, my lines are shorter at the top and then they get longer as they come down to the bottom. Um, this I liked. I thought this was kind of cool. It was kind of pop arty. I just wasn't totally sold on it. So I grabbed my jet black ink spray and I splattered some black paint onto it. And I liked that even more. I liked the high contrast of the black and the yellow and the orange. And so now I'm trying to decide which one I like. I feel like the distressed background is a little too busy. These lines are also a little too busy and I feel like they're competing with the flowers. That's my 12 year old daughter. She's like, no mom, those lines are terrible. I don't like those. She didn't like them at all. She's like, it's too messy. She liked the distressed background much better. So here we are trying to decide this one I liked because even though there were some stripes, the paint was really smooth at the bottom and I felt like that competed less, but I didn't wanna have the same background in my final photos for these projects. So ultimately, I decided to just create a sentiment strip. So I took the warm sunshine marker and I'm just running it across the kind of bottom third of the panel and I'm gonna create a stripe that it's about an inch wide. And this is the one that I pick. And I really enjoy this one more than any of the other backgrounds because there's so much white space on the card. I think that that really helps this flower take center stage. And I love all the white space. So basically we've just taken our inspiration photo or sketch if you will, and we've just flipped it around where the background was completely blue. Now we have a completely white background and a blue flower instead of a white flower. So get creative with your photo inspiration. Definitely you don't have to follow it to a T. You can switch things up and then you get a lot more looks out of that one piece of inspiration. Initially I was thinking I wanted a rough end on the end of that strip, but there wouldn't have been enough room for my sentiment to be completely in the orange and so I just continued it to the edge of the panel. 
Do make sure you let your watercolor completely dry before you stamp your sentiment. My sentiment came out nice and crisp and then it got a little fuzzy and I think that's because the pigments were still a little wet. Here's the finished card and to ground that sentiment strip I just hand drew a line underneath it with a fine liner and I didn't want to put one on the top edge of the sentiment strip because it seemed to close things in. I wanted to keep things airy. I hope that you guys enjoyed these projects today and are as excited to design with this color palette and the inspiration photo as much as I was. We would love to see what you're creating, so be sure to play along with the inspiration challenge over on the Altenew blog. I'll have a link down below and link your projects so that we can see them. If you share on social media, tag us at Altenew, at Notable Inc., and hashtag Altenew Color Connection. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration.